Hi everyone, this video is an interview recorded during the Embedded World conference. I recorded three interviews and one general video. Interviews with companies Accelera AI, Sima AI, STM32. You can find them on my channel in the coming week. In the interview I asked the questions that bother me the most as an AI developer. How to export models to the platform? What the limitations are? I am very grateful to all my interlocutors for the answers, which were all super detailed and super interesting for me. Let's go. Thank you, Winston, that you can ask my, uh, answer my question. And uh, can you tell me a little bit more about your platform? So the, the platform we showcase here is the SM32 and M25, on which we have a brand new uh, ISP camera pipeline. So we develop this ISP in conjunction with a tool uh, that allows customers to to tune uh, raw sensor cameras in order to have the best image quality for their own application. Okay, and uh, can you tell me a little bit more technical details, like how to export my models, which framework will support to export, and stuff like this? Yeah. So first of all, to when you work on computer vision, so you need to have a good image quality, and then after you can work with a NPU that is also inside uh, the MP25. And then you can work with a TensorFlow like and any framework to create your own models and then export it in the in the tool. So we, we have a tool provided by SC that you can test also on the developer cloud. And this tool allows to convert the ONX or TensorFlow Lite into a converting model that can be run on the NPU. Excellent. And uh, for this expert, do you have some limitation like a uh, transformer based model or something like this? The transformer based model is uh, the uh, NPU that we have is not suitable for this. Uh, today, transformer model is really advanced uh, model and some somehow big for this kind of feature. Uh, we can expect that for the next generation, a transformer that consumes low, low memory and maybe less layer, it could be suitable for, for, for this but, but right now, they may run on GPU, for example. For example, right now, it may run on GPU, but with an impact of the performances, yeah, of compared course. to the size of yeah. the model you want to run. Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, what about quantization? And how do you work with quantization? Quantization for this is really important to have the best performance on the NPU. So we support the, the per tensor quantization to have it supporting on the NPU. Uh, we have a fallback with the GPU that also supports the per channel, but the performance will be 10 times slower than the NPU. It could be sufficient for some, some use case. From the other, we, we, we prefer to work on per tensor so that we have the best performances. Yeah. And uh, is it possible like, to run partially, uh, like for example, if some layers are bad quantizable, to run these specific layers on GPU? Yes, yeah, so what is done uh, with the software is that uh, the NPU and the GPU work together. So if a layer is not reported on the NPU, it is fall back on the GPU. So the GPU can, can handle this and then comes back to the NPU when the layer is, uh, is possible on the NPU. Excellent, excellent. And as far as I understand, you have some platform to benchmark this on the real uh, hardware. Yes, we have a platform uh, which is called the, the Cube QBI Dev Club, which is this one, uh, on which you can uh, select a model. Yeah. So I will do the process. You can select a model if here we select a Yolo V8 model. You select the platform uh, that you want to, so it's either MPU or MCU, here we are interesting about the, uh, the MPU. The model is already quantized, so we don't need to quantize it, and you can optimize it to have it uh, working uh, fine with the uh, with, uh, with, uh, with NPU, it's already optimized. And then you can select the platform on which you want to uh, execute, so you have the MP25, this platform, you have also the former MP1 platform, MP13, MP15. If you launch the benchmark on the MP25, MP13, MP15, in some seconds and minutes, you will receive directly the inference time. So what it means is that it's really executed on real hardware that we host in France on different sites, and you get back some uh, some figures. So here you have the figures for the MP2. 
and the figures for the MP13 and the 20 it's a little bit longer because the model is huge yeah. and it yeah. only works on CPU yeah. on that time. Uh, is this with post-processing time? Like, uh, I, I don't think that you were so, but it's 31 millisecond uh, per YOLO V8. YOLO V8? Yes. It's YOLO V8 for segmentation. It's segmentation yeah. And it's pretty big model. And uh, ah, but for segmentation, it's not uh, need post processing. And uh, like, do you support post, like, non maximum separation post processing and, uh, uh, in your uh, export tool? Yeah, so it, it really depends. Actually, you have. Um, Either you can put the post processing on the side, so you develop it. Or the second way is uh, you can also create a TensorFlow Lite post processing that you can then execute with the TensorFlow Lite runtime, but that remember they need the XDXI distribution. And with this TensorFlow Lite runtime, you can execute post processing. So you can split your model okay. if you want to have it. Uh, the main part of the model running on the NPU and the post processing is running on the on the CPU. As uh, TensorFlow Lite runtime can run, can run yeah, it. yeah. And for uh, TensorFlow Lite inference, I can like uh, call it from Python, and uh, here also I can like call everything from Python. We support Python yeah. architecture and yeah. also C, C++ yeah, yeah, uh, API. So we okay. support both of them. Thank you very much. We it was super interesting. Thank you. Thank you.